So I did tune in to watch some of Raw this week. Not all of it. Some of it. And I can't lie, the primary reason I tuned in was to see how the company was going to pay tribute to the late, great, mean Gene Okerlund. And it's kind of a sad state of affairs and an indictment on the company's product. That's the primary reason somebody like me would tune in after 30 plus years of watching is because somebody died. And I was curious to see how they would honor, memorialize, and pay tribute to that individual. But that's the reality of where we are. That's my reality. So it was the reason I tuned in and said, hey, I don't really care about the national championship game, and who would. I'm going to watch at least some of Raw and wait for the tribute that I know is to come. And I know the reports had also gotten out there earlier in the day that Hulk Hogan was going to make an appearance on the show. And what's sad to me is for a guy that has meant so much to me as a wrestling fan, so much to me in my life, directly and indirectly, that it leaves me torn and conflicted when I hear the news that Hogan's going to be on Raw. Like, this should be something that I'm able to celebrate. This is something that should help me go back to being a kid again. This is something that I should be able to shut off the logic part of my mind and just have some fun and enjoy the fossil being on the show again. But thanks to Hogan and what he said, I can't just do that anymore. And that really sucks. And I'm really bitter about that. Can't lie. So it puts me, personally, in an incredibly awkward position. So I was wondering what all of you felt or thought when you saw Hogan was on Raw Monday night. Now I'm not here to tell you how you have to feel or how you should have felt. You feel however the hell the way you wanted to feel and feel about it. That's fine. Because I know for me, it's not easy. It just isn't. Like I said, the primary reason I do things on YouTube, it started because of professional wrestling. The reason I got into professional wrestling was because of Hulk Hogan. Lots of fun times that I've had in my life over the years Lots of friends that I have made over the years. Part of the reason I ended up eventually moving out here to Virginia all came directly and indirectly as a byproduct of professional wrestling. And that all ties back into Hulk Hogan. So it's hard to know what he said and what he represents when I look at so much of what he represented for me. Now, I'm all for giving people second chances, especially if I feel like they really understand the error of their ways. They really understand the gravity of the situation and what they did. And I'll be honest, when it comes to Hogan, the lines blur so much between Terry Bollea and Hulk Hogan, I'm not really sure that he truly has a grasp on reality and fully and completely understands what it was that he did that was so bad. Regardless of how that information came about, regardless of how everybody found out, we know about it. Ah, it sucks. And, you know, we just, when we talk about Hogan and all that he meant, it's not like you can give him the Ben Watry because ultimately he didn't kill anybody. You just can't pretend like it doesn't exist. You try to maybe minimize it, try to not talk about it very much, but ultimately you can't deny it because he's such a big part of the fiber of what WWE was over the years, WWF before that. And I just don't feel like Hulk is removed enough from his character to where he's doing anything other than whatever it takes to try and put himself back over to get in the favorable light of the fans so that way he can keep a job and make some money. That's the truth. 
And based off of Hogan's history of BS and flat out lying sometimes, um, I have to believe in actions more than words when it comes to Hogan, and I just haven't seen enough actions. doesn't mean that it's not there. I'm not saying that it isn't there or can't be there. I'm just saying I haven't seen enough to fully check the box on it. But I will say Monday night, I thought it was appropriate that he was there. Because when you're talking about the career, the life, the legacy of the great mean Gene Okerlund, the simple truth of the matter is a significant part of that legacy is Hulk Hogan. This is not the only part. It's not the only thing that he's known for by any stretch of the imagination. But when you're talking about mean Gene Okerlund as a byproduct, the first person you typically think of is Hulk Hogan. Hogan. And when it comes to the video tribute that they put together that was almost five minutes long, that thing was magnificent. And maybe we can credit that in part to WWE, unfortunately, having a lot of practice in recent years putting together these tribute video packages. But it was a wonderful, wonderful package at that. Warmed the cockles of my heart and made me sad all at the same time. And I was really curious what Hogan was going to say in his promo. And while he wasn't perfect, it is one of the more effective wrestling promos that I've heard the man cut in quite some time. It was relatively short, sweet, to the point, awesome, yet sad and tragic, especially when you brought up all the names, the tag match, all of this other stuff. Like Hogan was actually putting over me and Gene Okerlund instead of putting over Hulk Hogan. And in the context of the appearance, and the way the appearance went down and how it was done, I have absolutely no problem with it. It was more about glorifying and glamorizing Mean Gene Okerlund than it was Hulk Hogan. And I'm sure there are plenty of people that knew that this was an inescapable reality come Monday night, that Hogan was gonna be on Raw because he knew ultimately it felt right when you're talking about the career of Mean Gene. Might not have wanted it, but I'm sure there were plenty of people on the Twitter sphere that were saying, well, this guy can get off my TV now or fuck Hogan or this or that. And that is fine. I just ask you this. If what Hulk Hogan did bothers you so much, do you have the same reaction when a convicted wife beater Stone Cold Steve Austin makes an appearance on Raw or SmackDown or on a pay-per-view? That is not to minimize what Hogan did that's terrible. But in the grand scheme of things, as bad as racism is, raping somebody, beating somebody, especially a woman, I think we can all come to a basic fundamental agreement that that's even worse. Like if Hulk Hogan bothers you, but Mike Tyson, a convicted rapist, regardless of whether or not you believe that he did it, the fact is he is a convicted rapist. That is an indisputable fact. If you celebrate Mike Tyson, but you cuss at Hulk Hogan, maybe you've got the problem. If you sit there and bitch about Hulk Hogan being on television, but jam out the fucking child molesting R. Kelly, maybe Hulk Hogan's not the only one with a problem. And look, if you don't like Hogan being on Raw, if you don't like him being on WWE TV and you wish he would go away and die, fine. You're inclined to have that opinion. You're inclined to have that viewpoint. And I'm not fundamentally trying to change that. Because like I said, in the grand scheme of things, as a wrestling fan, as somebody that comes on here and talks about wrestling, what Hogan did pisses me the fuck off because selfishly it put me in an incredibly awkward, tough situation. And there is a larger part of me that is like, you know what, if he never did appear on WWE TV again, that might just be fine with me. But I'm not going to sit there and get all pissy pants about him while I'm jamming out to our help. And it ain't nothing but a number. He was trying to tell you something, people! While sitting there and marking out to the glass shattering of Stole Cold Steve Austin, I'm going to beat a bitch! Give me a beer! Yeah! Here's one to you! What are you telling a woman with two black eyes? Nothing! <laughs> Done told the bitch twice! Should have been Austin's promo. And Tyson. I did not make this a mess, swear to God. I did not. 
It just forced the consensual sex on her. If those guys get you excited, if those people get you pumped, if those people you are happy to see on Raw, then why can't you be the same for Hogan? If you feel that racism is worse than rape or woman beating, fine. I feel like in the grand scheme of things, that's a bit fucked up. They all go into the really shitty things to be category. But you can say hurtful, mean, hateful words, and it doesn't necessarily directly result in violating somebody's vajayjay -jay or giving them a fucking black eye. It can potentially lead to that, yes, but it doesn't automatically directly do so. So let's get a little grip on reality here and a little bit of context. If you don't want Hogan on TV anymore, fine. But I better not see, for those people out there in the Twitter sphere bitching about Hogan, I better not see him marking out the next time a Mike Tyson or a Stone Cold Steve Austin makes an appearance on Raw because then, and truly then, you are nothing but a bunch of fucking hypocrites.